Hi, this is Walter Weesey with Parks Fly Shop. Today I'm going to be doing a small flashy beadhead nymph called a BLM. And this fly is uh, sort of the fly that lost the battle for uh, supremacy of the small, really bright, flashy beadhead nymphs to the lightning bug. Uh, and I believe the reason it lost that battle is because uh, the material it's tied with is angel hair and it's much, much more annoying to use than uh, standard tinsel is. And the reason I'm tying this fly is it's uh, one of our most consistent lake flies. It's the uh, fly my clients have been doing the best on on our private lake trips over the last couple weeks and it's also the uh, fly that uh, I caught my single biggest fish ever in Yellowstone Park on. It was a uh, 24 inch rainbow in Trout Lake, uh, sight fish to it a couple years ago. Um, and what we'll, the way we'll typically fish this fly is we'll fish it under a dry fly um, especially when we're sight fishing, fishing under an Adams or a Trude, size 14 or 16, and uh, look for cruisers and just put it right in front of them, and it's kind of a small, flashy mouthful. So I'm going to go ahead and get going here. And my hook is a size 16 Diariki 060, uh, standard nymph hook. It's a 332nd gold bead. Um, my thread here is olive done, size 80. And Despite the bead, it's not a bead head fly, it's a bead thorax fly. And so the first thing I'm going to do is take that bead and pull it slightly back from the eye. And I'm going to make X wraps to secure that bead in place. And make those X wraps right over the top of the bead. Because they'll be hidden by uh, other materials in a little bit. And then when you get your bundle of angel hair, it's kind of an annoying material. Um, very very fine mylar, it's like super fine crystal flash. Kind of a good rule of thumb with it is clip off more than you think you need and you're, you actually don't need very much. And it tends to be, kind of have a lot of broken tips, hopefully you can see there. It tends to be all different lengths. Mostly used as a winging material um, since it does have that almost natural taper because so much of it is, uh, so many of the tips are broken. I'm going to strip that out and get a bundle about like so for 16, so not very much. And what I do with all the scraps that I pull out is keep them in a Ziploc. Uh, this really fine mar mylar material is a really, really good addition to uh, dubbing material. And so I'm gonna, I keep all the scraps and then when I want to make a dubbing blend, I chop it up to provide flash for uh, my dubbing. So any, anytime you're working with this stuff to prevent too much waste, keep a Ziploc and uh, kind of just hold on to the material and then when you wind up, when I wind up making dubbing just kind of give it a give it a chop. Pay very close attention to how I'm uh, wrapping the, or tying this material in here. What I did there is I started right behind the bead and uh, made several turns back about a third, third of the way back towards the, the tail. Tied in the tail facing backwards, trimmed it and then uh, left the thread or left the thread hang about a third of the way back. Now what I'm going to do is fold that material back along the side of the hook shank and then go all the way back up to the bead again. And the reason I'm, I'm doing this with the thread wraps is the, uh, the thread wraps are what provide basically all the body taper on this fly. And so um, layering the underbody like that gives me just enough of a taper so that it looks you know like an, a mayfly nymph ought to look. I'm not sure if they take this as a mayfly or a uh, a uh, midge. I think it's kind of a multi-role, small, flashy annoyance that uh, you know doesn't doesn't look like a threat, but uh, catches their attention. My rib is fine gold wire, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap that material forward now. And I'm using brown, um, the the blend brown olive of angel hair, and I this is probably my second most uh, useful color of this. Uh, material for these flies. I uh, also like the uh, pheasant tail blend quite a lot and then this year I'm actually using the PMD blend which is kind of a reddish gold and uh, doesn't really look anything like a PMD I don't think but um, especially since I'm fishing in lakes but uh, that's actually been the most consistent color this spring so I may have a new favorite if that, if that continues. So I wrapped that material forward and didn't trim the the leftovers. I'm going to use that to form my my wing case and legs. And then I ribbed it and secured the rib immediately in front of the where I tied off the uh, the angel hair. I'm going to make another turn over the top of that bead, and then 
get my super glue here and I'm going to use that to reinforce the, uh, the bead tie-in point. That's probably the most common failure point of this fly is the thread wraps over the bead would break and then uh, the bead starts sliding around. So that's going to reinforce that as well as the wing case. Make one turn here, two turns, secure that, trim it. And when you're tying an 18 or a 20 of this fly, which are the really the two sizes I use the most actually, the 16 is pretty big. Um, anyway, when you're tying a smaller one, you can usually get two flies out of one bundle of angel hair fibers. But on 16, I usually only get one, one fly out of uh, a bunch. Final step here, brand new bottle of head cement, it's a little bit, a little bit full to make it easy to get a small drop on there. The last step is to give it a drop of head cement there. And you can, if you want to, use a tapering scissor to trim away some of the fibers on the tail to give a natural taper to the tail. Um, the fish don't care at all, so I, I usually don't bother. There is a BLM nymph, and like I said, this is a great, uh, Great fly in area lakes, and uh, I think it, I think it was originated as a tailwater fly. So that kind of similar situation, spooky fish, clear water. Uh, it's it's a really good choice to use as a substitute for the lightning bug. It's kind of that same style of fly, but it's one that not many people use, and thus not many fish see. As always, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Um, I've gotten a few requests for flies and so I think probably for the next fly I'll do one of those requests which is a, uh, a matte stone and uh, given the high water stone fly nymphs are obviously a good choice right now too. I'll try to get that next one out sooner rather than later. Thanks.